The Gifted, Season 1, Episode 8. Fuck, this episode is called Threat of Extinction. So we open on yet another flashback, 1952, and yeah, the the Strucker, the two siblings, Fenris. Very cool. Um, been wondering if they were going to make an appearance since Strucker's pretty infamous in the comics. So yeah, pretty infamous family. And let's see. Yeah, uh, and back in the present, you know, Reed brings up, you know, Otto, his his father, and we hear, you know, he left him in in the hospital and and never saw him again. Which, yeah, sounds very harsh. And later we do understand why, you know, why he did what he did. And yeah, really appreciate. I'm so glad that characters in movies and shows today to actually talk to each other. I, I don't think I ever again need to see one of those countless things from the 80s and 90s where people just refuse to just say what was on their mind to people that are important to them, you know. But here, yeah, you know, Polaris tells Marcos the problem wasn't that you went back to the cartel. The problem was I could tell you liked it and, you know, the fact that she kissed you after, you know, these, these things, yeah, you know, you can completely understand. And, and yeah, she says, you know, we can barely even protect ourselves. How can we protect this baby, you know? And, yeah, Clarice really not a fan of, of Dreamer. I appreciate that that does change by the end of the episode. And love the teamwork to stop the the spy Chloe Tan. Um, the um, yeah. So so the you know she's too fast for any of them to handle by themselves, but Marcos can create like a limited you know she can't. You know, I, I did briefly think, can't she just, like, duck under it? But maybe there's a thing about... And she's also, she's on drugs, so she's not being 100%, you know... Yeah, I'm told people don't think completely logically when, when they're on. But, yeah, you know, she can't go... You know, he's got her stuck to the, the one position. And then, you know, Clarice makes a portal... To, to, so that John can can jump in from from above and yeah very very nicely done and so happy to see Skylar Samuels on the show as as Esme um, that was one of the things you know the moment I found out she was going to be on this I was really looking forward to seeing her on it you know I think she was amazing on Scream Queens as Grace Gardner and. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she is also on American Horror Story. Also, it's something that I'm also going to be watching and doing videos on. So, yeah, really, really cool. Um, yeah, she's she's really great here, and it's you know it's, it's a very different character from. So it's you know it's not one of those things. You know, some actors can't really play very different, multiple very different roles. They basically have one mode, and that is not the case here. Glad to see it. And, yeah, you know, they talk about, you know, some of these refugees might be dangerous, and I love, I, I believe it's John who says, you know, that doesn't mean that we stop helping them. You know, wonderful. From your lips to, you know, the years of those in government and yikes that elbow pop like holy crap and and really good acting on the the kid too because like I'm I'd like to think that he has never had to go through that in real life and obviously you know they're just you know I I love when movies and shows do that because it's kind of like it's really just the like the acting the timing and then the sound design and the sound design here is excellent like that was quite some pop holy crap because, like, obviously, in real life, you know, it, like, he, she's, she, like, grabs his arm and, like, pulls it a little, and he's like, you know, 
and and you know it did it wasn't convincing just as I did it because I I didn't add the pop noise but yeah and the the let's see Andy is is going to to put the kids arm in a, in a sling and he says we're gonna we're gonna do the sling song feel feel free to join in at any point and then he starts beatboxing. <laughs> Which is like legitimately like yeah you know th th obviously the kid's gonna gonna find that really charming that's yeah and let's see then we have the um, um right the yeah um yeah Esme and and Kate talk and there's that thing about you know I I didn't mean to pry and it's like I mean. Kate, obviously no one should have their mind read without permission. You know, this is something we all agree on because mind reading is a thing in the room. Oh, yeah. But the, Kate did say, can you read my mind, you know, just, yeah. Let's see. And, yeah. Um, Polaris can't seem to put down the knife which it's it's one of those things where like yeah you know before she you know got more you know she used to be very very hardened like Marcos was and you know if Marcos is gonna you know go back to his old ways maybe she will too it's you know it's that kind of thing but yeah um Threatening to use the knives on on Chloe, you know, yeah, pretty intense. And I really appreciate that by the end of the episode, we know, yeah, you know, Chloe was a victim here too. You know, we need more media that points out if someone does something that hurts you, very likely they themselves have been hurt. That doesn't always mean, you know, if... Like, if they're rich, then they have no excuse for hurting you. They don't have to do the things that, that hurt. But, you know, she was literally a, a prisoner. And, you know, the let's see, they, they killed her husband and took her kid. You know, that's, yeah. Um, let's see. Um, right, and the, yeah, there's the line about, you know, you go down this this road, it gets ugly. Which I feel like, I mean, just... Do, do roads really have to be that pretty? Gosh. And... Yeah, the... Um, yeah, they point out, you know... It's Chloe seems like she's on something, and apparently, like she tried to pick the the. Well, actually, I guess no. She she broke at least one of her nails. I guess trying to get like yeah, trying to claw her way out, basically. Yeah, I'm guessing they they just they couldn't show us that because of how I just realized I didn't talk. Yeah, I guess by this point you know that there are spoilers. Anyway. By this point in the video, anyway, yeah, I'm guessing they couldn't show that because of like the the rating that the the show had. But I appreciate that the noise made it in there, and and Polaris had the line about you know something about like oh you know, she's ruining her manicure or something like holy crap. And let's see, but but yeah, you know the maybe she's on kick and going through withdrawal you know, makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> and Clarice tries to, to cheer up the the little kid and and you know, she really like legitimately, she is very, very charming when she when she goes for it and, and just yeah, like you know, points out, you know, I yeah, this thing of how their appearance you know, they they can't pass for for non mutant, and and you know she says you know Zingo can't either because he's full of fur. <laughs> it's of course it gets the the kid to smile. You know that's yeah. And let's 
see. Yeah, just, you know, Clarice keeps coming across problems that you can't duct tape back together. And, yeah, um, Otto is very, very difficult when Reed and John come to, to talk to him, but eventually does, you know, warm up and, you know, he asks to see a picture of the kids and he studies it very intently and, like, we, the audience, can tell there's something going on here. Why is he... You know, and and really, he's he's trying to figure out: Are they? You know, could they be mutants? That's at least part of it. And yeah, you know, he he says it's it's not my fault. You know, I didn't. You know, and and Reed is like, it's not about blame. And we get the thing, you know, and and yeah, he says something like, I know you don't care about me, and you know, Otto says. Everything I did was for you. And this is, again, you know, there are a lot of people who legitimately, you know, they they were trying to do the best to help the people close to them. And, you know, because of the pain they caused, it didn't seem that way. You know, I, th I think there's a lot of men who, like, specifically left... A relationship maybe even left behind kids without a father you know because they were worried that they were doing more harm than good with their presence which does not excuse leaving obviously especially children but the um, let's see yeah and and you know when he realizes that the kids are are mutants you know he really it, it really gets to him he says the word no like seven times within a couple of seconds and then he says it came back you know and he yeah um, let's see yeah I'll get back to it when uh, yeah going through this chronologically yeah the the restraining was very clever the the um, you know the the um yeah first they f first andy you know pushes chloe up against the the bars and lauren makes a shield around her and they end up you know stapling her to a table basically and yeah we were told about you know andrea and andreas Strucker, the f yeah, the Fenris twins, and yeah, they were not like other mutants. So they're one of the they're the the not like other mutant mutants, and yeah, you know the the thing that the reason that Reed was in the hospital was that he was given a an injection that was supposed to suppress his mutant abilities before they, you know, uh, what's the word, before they came, came out. And, you know, we get the detail that, you know, Reed says, I almost died from that, you know. And it reminds me, it makes me think of, like, how a number of intersex people are sadly forced to go through I believe they, they it's referred to as corrective surgery because you know they, they don't fit neatly along the the you know the gender binary so yeah it's it's horrific and I, I really appreciate because that's the thing like for a lot of intersex people there's nothing actually wrong they're they're you know it, it doesn't fit within the gender binary but it's not dangerous. It's not dangerous for them. It's not dangerous for anybody else. But because we have these ideas, you know, and, and similarly on this the show, you know, people think mutants are dangerous. And, you know, yes, the Fenris twins were dangerous, but that doesn't mean that their offspring, you know, the, the, yeah, generations down the line necessarily will be. You know, Otto wasn't dangerous. So, yeah. Because of this perception, they're, you know, they, they put, 
yeah, read and and in real life intersex people are put through these you know procedures that are actually dangerous to them. And let's see. Yeah, um, I like Andy standing up for for Lauren with the. So he's he's credited as hulking mutant, you know, really towers over it, massive. And that was also, you know, I appreciate like twice in this episode we think, oh, is he dangerous? But no, he's, you know, the second time it's like it's he's he's concerned, you know, it, like he makes a really imposing figure, but he never like he never punches anyone. He doesn't he doesn't even like directly threaten. It's just the fact that he's so big you know, makes people think, you know, earlier in the episode, it was actually, you know, it was Chloe who was, you know, yeah, having these thoughts that, that Esme picked up on and said, you know, she's dangerous, but the, I forget exactly who, one of the mutant underground people were like, oh, you mean the, the big guy, is he dangerous, you know, because of appearances, so very nicely done there. Yeah, and I like, they, you know, you're my sister. Nobody talks to me, talks to you except for me. Talks to you like that. Holy crap. Wow. My brain is a fried egg right now. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Uh, you have the words, you make them a sentence. And the, yeah, very cool when Esme helps with, uh, you know, yeah, reading Chloe's mind, and it's this thing of, you know, Polaris, once again, not the, the most trusting or open person, so she's like, are you sure there's, you know, and, and Esme is like, my family, you know, SS has my family, uh, this is, you know, I'm in this fight too. I might have an idea about, at least one of the people that she's talking about being related to anyway and yeah the the thing about you know Otto says it was this you know your mother didn't know it was this but she knew I had something it was the secrets that destroyed our relationship and that is again like there's a lot of cases where a man has kept secrets from you know his girlfriend or wife or fiance and it ended up destroying the relationship and let's see. Yeah, and we get the thing about you know, have they held hands since they got their powers? And yeah, very very tense when you know Dr. Campbell and the others show up. And Otto must have been unbelievably powerful, which you know, so was Andre and Andreas. The A's, the AVS's, the Fenris twins, you know, because Pulse is right there and he is using his powers. He was just given kick and Otto is still able to, like, even being shot in the chest multiple times and there's, like, blood pooling out and he's clearly, like, it's not like it didn't affect him at all. He's still able to create this energy ball, like, holy crap. And... Yeah, Esme sees Trask Industries and says, you know, I think I can find it. Very, very cool. That's, yeah. You know, that is the thing you risk when you send a spy. And, you know, maybe they'll be caught and reveal information, even if they don't verbally tell it. And let's see. Yeah, and, and you know, Clarice now feels it is her fault you know, she she didn't know that it was going to happen. But yeah, she blames herself for the the kid being, you know, yeah, for for the for the attack on the the place. And she said, you know, I can't take that memory from her, but you can. You know, very nicely done. And and I appreciate you know. We've now gotten several instances where Dreamer, like, she uses her powers against someone's will. She uses her power to get information out of an enemy. That, you know, I appreciate this use where, no, this is making the, the kid's life better. And I'm 
yeah, as, as far as I can tell, you know, the kid knows that that's what they're about to do. So it is, you know, yeah, informed consent. So there's absolutely no ethical issue. And at first, Reed doesn't say what happened with his father, which is understandable. There's a lot to process there. And, you know, Kate hugs him. You know, she can tell that he's, he needs it. And then we see Andy and Lauren hold hands. Very ominous. Love it. Um, yeah. The, the, um, I think that's everything. Right, I also, I like the misdirect. Like, at the very start of the episode, it wasn't, you know, at first it looked like, oh no, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to, to, you know, get out of this situation with the, with the Fenris, before we realized that the Fenris, Fenris twins, but the, yeah, then they start using their powers, and there's these wicked smiles on their faces, very, very cool. So, I'm to be trivia, guest star Raymond J. Barry also appeared with Jamie Chung and Natalie Allen Lind on the Fox TV series Gotham. Raymond J. Barry and Garrett Dillahunt both starred in the TV series Justified. And let's see. Yeah. Um, okay, not going to read all of this because some of this is spoilers. Um, let's see. Hmm. Uh, no, I feel like that's also a... Oh, right, yeah. Uh, someone theorizes maybe this is related to, to the MCU because there's, you know, yeah. Um, there's a at least one Von Strucker in the MCU. And... Huh, um, let's see... Okay, so there's a there's a music box. The name of in this episode the the name of the tune story is known as the El King, a Germanic folklore story about the king of fairies. And let's see, right? And yeah, someone someone added in details about the the Fenris. Yeah. Um. Really looking forward to seeing where they go next and we're actually let's see season one has a total of 13 episodes so let's see I guess that leaves about five we're we're past the halfway point very cool also really glad that this is a Matt Nick show where when a major character was put behind bars they didn't stay there for forever while the Story just kind of spins its wheels.